It's been a while since my last video. Quite a while, in fact. But that doesn't mean I haven't been doing nothing at all. In fact, it probably means the opposite. I've been working a little too much on what I'm actually supposed to be doing, research in astrophysics. Over the last few weeks, I've been working on a couple of different projects. One of them I've talked about on the channel before. It's a project or a coding based project so that anyone can analyze data from the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite or TESS Space Telescope. This project has been dragging on for perhaps a little too long and I've been working on a whole bunch of different things behind the scenes for that project so that hopefully anyone can pick it up and run with it sometime soon. So one of the things that's been involved with doing that, aside from squashing a whole lot of bugs, is writing a paper describing the package and how you could use it and why it's actually useful. So hopefully that will be done in the relatively near future. Another package I've been working on is something a little bit different. So in astronomy we have lots of different telescopes and each telescope is a little bit different. And there are two main types of optical astronomy. You have photometry, which is just taking images with colored filters in between your telescope and the sky, or spectroscopy, which is breaking the light coming from a distant object up into a rainbow and measuring the brightness of each color of light in that rainbow. All of these different telescope systems can do spectroscopy or photometry. They specialize in different parts. Um, but what I'm mostly interested in is photometry. So measuring the brightness of an object based in a particular kind of light. And because each telescope system is slightly different, this means that the way one telescope sees an object is slightly different from the way another telescope sees an object. So it becomes a little bit complicated to say, is this telescope seeing the exact same thing as another telescope? It's like asking if my version of the color green is the same as your version of the color green. They might be pretty similar, but exactly if they align with each other is extremely hard to tell. But fortunately for astronomers and telescopes, they're kind of easy to characterize and understand. Whereas the human eye and brain, that's a bit more tricky to characterize and understand. So what I've been working on is a way that if you give this code a filter that your telescope uses, it'll compare that filter and calculate what it would expect to see for various types of stars and compare that to another telescope system which is very well understood, the PanSTARRS telescope system. So this code is kind of boring, I guess, but it is hopefully pretty useful. It will allow us to directly compare different telescope systems and calibrate them to a single telescope. So hopefully that will also be done relatively soon and will allow astronomers to be more confident in determining if your color green is the same as my color green. So that's another project I've been working on. I can maybe talk a bit more about that in the future if people are interested. Um, another thing I've been working on is that you might have seen in the media recently that there was a very, very big comet discovered at the edge of the solar system. Now, as it turns out, I've actually been working on trying to understand this comet, which is not really something I expected to be doing since Generally, what I do is stuff far, far away from us in very distant galaxies. But working on something in the solar system has been quite interesting and quite challenging. So the reason I was working on this is because a telescope, or I mentioned before, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, um, actually observed this big comet as it was moving closer into our solar system. So at the moment, it's very far away from us. Um, but it is slowly making its way into the inner solar system and I think it will get to a distance from the sun about 10 or so times the distance from the earth to the sun. Which is still quite far away from us but it will be close enough to make quite a spectacular show I suspect. And that's largely due to this comet being enormous. It's about 100 or so kilometers across which is much, much bigger than your usual comets. Its size is one of the reasons it's quite interesting. Because it's so large, we can see it much further away than what we can usually see comets before they become bright and active from ejecting material and reflecting sunlight. So what I've been doing is looking at the test data on this object and trying to see if there's anything interesting in it. Like if we can see 
if the comet itself is spinning, or if that spin is just completely hidden. And it turns out this is kind of a complicated thing to do, so I needed to get the images from TESS, remove all of the junk from the images, in this case, junk includes stars and galaxies and everything that's not the big comet, and have it so that only the big comet remains, and try and calculate something called a light curve of this object, which tells us how the brightness of the big comet changes over time. And this proved to be pretty tricky because the big comet, although it is very big, it is very far away, so it is quite faint. So faint that it's kind of at the detection limit of TESS. And getting an accurate light curve of something that's super faint and moving was pretty challenging. But luckily I managed to work out my code and got something which seems reasonable at the other end. Um, and this work is kind of being published in a research note, so that should be up sometime soon. I can put a link to that somewhere um, when that happens. So I've been working on a whole bunch of different things, a lot of coding um, and a lot of trying to understand how to get very good data out of very difficult images. There will be more videos coming in the future. I just need to get around to making them. Um, but if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future or questions that you might find interesting for me to answer, let me know and I'll see what I can do. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you next time, and that shouldn't be in a month's time. <laughs>